and welcome to Murphy's Garden. For anyone new to the channel, Murphy's Garden is a gardening YouTube channel which just documents the day-to-day -day running and design of our garden. It's about an acre in size. Um, but I want to take a step back a bit with this video and we've been very busy with the bulb planting and all the sort of the day-to-day -day running of the garden. But I want to take a step back from that and, um, and just reflect on um, the garden itself and how it's had a big impact certainly on my life in, in terms of how it's got me hooked on gardening but also how it's affected um, my children and um, Olivia especially is going into this as a career so I thought this would be a good opportunity to um, perhaps look at careers in gardening um, and I think there are a lot of young people out there who are absolutely passionate about the environment and um, there are so many different jobs within the horticultural industry and there's this big green skills gap that they're desperate to fill. They want people that will fill all these jobs and it's not just gardening, it's not just becoming a gardener. Um, you can be a gardener, you can become a head gardener, you can become all sorts of, in, all sorts of things within horticulture. So looking for scientists, um, um, botanists, um, so many, so many, a wealth and depth of different things, even education and in the media, there's lots and lots of jobs. And I think a lot of young people don't even consider it as a career. And I know I certainly didn't at 17. It certainly wasn't even on my radar. It was something I discovered sort of in my 30s. So um, I know having got um, two teenagers that at school, it's not mentioned as a, as a potential career option. And it's only the fact that we've got a garden and, and perhaps through us that Olivia discovered her joy of gardening and that's why she's, she's doing it as a career. But for many people who haven't got access to green spaces, perhaps live in the city, um, then it's quite difficult to ever discover this as a career. So I just want to raise the awareness of that. And in this video, we're going to look at um, chart Olivia's um, progress. She's just starting her training in um, landscape architecture. So we're going to go for a walk with Murphy and we're going to have a chat with her and find out how she's getting on so far. And we'll try and um, follow her throughout this um, journey. Come on, should we go for a walk? Should we go for a walk? Come on then. got Olivia home for a flying visit just for the weekend and it's a good opportunity um, well to take the dog for a walk but also to um, touch base with her and find out how she's getting on. She's doing um, landscape architecture at university and this is her first term um, and I'm really interested to hear, uh, obviously I speak to her every, every night practically, but I thought it'd be quite nice to do a little video regularly, touch base with her for anyone out there who's perhaps thinking of of pursuing landscape architecture as a as a career but also for perhaps there are other older people like me who aren't necessarily going to have a change of career but are mad passionate gardeners and got into gardening later in life and perhaps maybe regret not pursuing it as a career and are quite nosy to find out what the whole industry is all about so if you're interested in that let's um, have a chat with Olivia and hear her experiences so far this term. I think the first thing you could tell us is what were you interested in at school? So what were the passions that have led you to pursue this as a career? Um, well, I was always really interested in um, art and design at school. And I was really, really passionate. And I had such a lovely teacher. Um, and so they were always my favourite lessons to go to. And when I first started doing art for GCSE, our first project was looking at gardens. and. Um, I think initially we were drawing things like seed heads and seed pods and that really kind of linked the garden to also art as well which I'd never really considered doing before. Um, however it was only as was probably your influence um, and me being outside a lot more in the garden that I started to really put two and two together and also the idea of creating more three-dimensional things which I was naturally quite drawn to um, really progress my art into um, more of a sculptural idea alongside gardening and then I think that's when I put the idea of garden design and also creating outdoor spaces and actually understanding that to, to do garden design it's not only about the two-dimensional plans it's also about looking at trees and looking to the future and and the environment and understanding how things grow and 
actually visualising yourself in a space and what it would look like in years to come oh. when I realised that they, those two subjects can link quite well together. So just tell us about what you did after leaving school. Um, so for A-levels I did art, business and product design and I think those A-levels equipped me, equipped me quite well for what I'm doing at the moment so I'm, I'm pleased I did those subjects however there is you know that you can do things like geography um even photography lots of different things like that um but whenever i finished a levels there was no career um guidance or anything like that and it, it was all sort of like going to medicine you know go and be a doctor there wasn't really anything into um a variety of things for for what i wanted to do um so as a default i applied for universities and i applied to do landscape architecture um just as like a backup so i went through the whole ucas system which was quite long-winded and did all of that um but i still wasn't 100 percent sure whether that's what i wanted to do and whether university was the right thing for me so um and and also in going into garden design, which I which is what I thought I wanted to do, there was no degree in garden design at all. It was only like land, landscape architecture. Um, so and I didn't know whether I wanted to go and do an apprenticeship or go into the RHS. Um, and my dad did the RHS courses a year before me, so. And he said they were good and I wanted to build on my plant knowledge. I decided to take a year out and I did um, an RHS level two course in practical and theory. And then I also did um, a garden design diploma and also a planting design diploma. And I did some volunteering at a Horatio's garden um, and also worked at um, a local nursery, which I, was a job that I'd had for a while. Um, and I actually really enjoyed my year out and I think it was very, very beneficial and the people that I met and the skills that I developed um, have been really, really crucial to the things that I'm doing now and also for my future, I think. Can you tell us a little bit about um, the course so far, this term, um, what you, how you find it and also maybe the background of some of the other people on the course, have they come from a similar background to you or, or what kind of people there are? Um, well, I think being at school, you don't really, like all of my friends, as, as nice as they all were, um, I did feel a little bit bad talking to them about gardening and plants and things because I didn't really think they they were as interested as me. But it was so lovely going to university and everyone on my course, you can just talk to them about plants and yeah, everyone, they're just as interested. <laughs> you don't get a sense of... Glazing over. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so that's really nice and that's something that I didn't really think I would find. Um, but everyone is from quite a similar background. Everyone has had some sort of influence, whether it's from family or someone that they know who has been really interested in gardening. Um, and I think that is nice. However, it, it does really show that there's a real lack of um, schools promoting it or just people picking up gardening or actually knowing about it from different ways other than a close family member which schools aren't introducing it yeah, in the curriculum at all yeah no. they're really not um and i think with all this environmental issues that we're having it really does need to be promoted more as a um a sustainable and actually a really good career choice to but have you can make a real yeah, difference definitely. yeah um whereas at the moment it's just being deemed as a career that's just for people who are a bit stupid and you don't really not have academic. yeah not really academic which is definitely not true you have to have so many different skills and and so much knowledge to be in this career and there's so much to it as well um so tell us what have you done on the course so far what's the kind of things you're doing um there's a lot of variety in the course from looking at plants and understanding their habit um we have plant books that we we get given new plants each week and we have to learn information about it um, and then document it all in our books and do little sketches and look at their different forms and what suitable places they would be in. Um, and we always go on, every Monday we have um, 
big walks around the the town so I always get my steps up I'm doing about 25,000 steps <laughs> have to be um, quite fit to minimum. be along <laughs> <laughs> yeah but that's really nice and I, I that is something that I do really like about the course it's not just nine to five lectures every day we're actually out and about going on site visits and actually physically visiting the places rather than just looking at it on slides or in textbooks we're actually going to the places and seeing the design for ourselves and and actually engaging with each other and it's nice looking at different people's opinions as well what would you say are the skills that you definitely need to pursue a career in landscape art is there anything that um, you really must be good at and must be able to do well i think um as long as you've really got a passion um for what you're doing and even if it's a, a passion for the environment, a passion for wanting to make change. Um, I think we, on my course, we do, we've, well, definitely in first year, we've been doing a lot of um, hand drawing. And I think they're very keen to develop that as a skill before we go on to um, things like CAD um, and use like Photoshop and do it all on the computer. So, um, I mean, I don't think you need to be the best artist in the world as long as you are able to demonstrate what you're trying to portray in your idea and whether that's and and like looking at other people's drawings in the studio and things it's it really does range and it's really lovely to see everyone's different drawing styles and that really does come across um and i don't think there's any skill in particular that you it's really necessary as as i said as long as you've got a real passion for the subject then I think you can go quite far with it and you, you were you're... quite worried before starting the course you were quite worried that there'd be a lot of maths which wasn't really yeah. your best subject yeah no <laughs> maths is not really my forte um but no it's not really that maths heavy I mean so you have, have to, be able to, to measure <laughs> yeah you have to be able to measure and use like a scale rule but as long as you've got that sorted um not there's not there's not really that much <laughs> you have to do calculus no. but i guess i guess it will maybe Probably develop if you've um if you're doing like ordering plants and looking at pricing and things like but that basic then, basic adding up yeah and like I, I, nothing yeah. too challenging nothing too much i hope i hope not, <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> anyway so far yeah so i wanted you to clarify um there was a ba and a bsc mm -hmm. so the bachelor of art and the bachelor of science degree so do you know about the difference between the two, what that involves? Um, well, so far I haven't, we're both doing the same sort of thing. And I think it starts to split off into um, more specific um, and more related things, depending on what you're choosing in second year. Um, so I'm yet to sort of find out exactly what it consists of. But from what I know so far, the BSc is much more focused on the ecology of a landscape so planting with a bit more of a purpose and looking at perhaps nature and um pollinators and things like that more in mind um and looking at the geography and things like that whereas i think the um ba is focused more on the planning um so i think you look at more legislation and um if you were um using like different contractors and things like that um where but i think if you were doing to get a degree in landscape architecture you're ultimately getting the name landscape architecture so mm -hmm. both of you both are going to provide you with skills you need just as much of the skills yeah it's just it's um, just about your preference and what yeah. you prefer doing and and like you're obviously studying in a city so is most of the stuff you're studying um more of like urban planning or do they focus on gardens or, or was it um, more big scale well at the moment it's only well i'm only in my first term so we've we've been doing a lot of um looking at the city that we're in so it's definitely a lot more urban um but i don't know it might progress into other things we're going to be looking at like the history of landscapes and things like that so that might develop into mm. different skills where we're looking at um more traditional gardens um but yeah so the work you've done urban. so far from what i've seen is more kind of like critiquing different landscapes that mm -hmm. they've installed in the city yeah. is that the kind of thing we haven't doing? so 
um we haven't yet been given the thing of like go and do like just go design. design something yeah. um yeah so at the moment we're we're looking at current um um development within the city and looking at it before it was um redeveloped and then now um and sort of comparing that and we've been drawing out the plans and so measuring it up and developing the skills on that first <laughs> of course um before we then let loose and then get given all these different things and yeah. it's kind of that like right to really design exciting. your own thing but you're en enjoying it aren't you so yeah far, i really yeah. like it yeah yeah so i think we'll carry on our walk and then when we get home um, Olivia perhaps can just show show you some of the work that she's done so far this term. But thank you very much. That's given us a really good insight so far, hasn't it, Murphy? <laughs> Murphy's very interested too. Okay. These series of drawings show the development from the initial measurements that we collated um, to then plans and sections and then axonometric drawings. We then got given different projects where we had to write essays and look at different readings and so we had to do drawings alongside those so these drawings were specifically to show the ideas that are discussed in my essay. We also have to do quite sketchy drawings so we get given five minutes um, at a site and we have to just do little drawings of elements and different sections um, so this just develops our skill of being able to draw quickly and just get our ideas down on paper. And finally, this is my plant book. So as I said previously, we get given different plants each week and then we have to um, do diagrams and drawings of them, look at their habit, their form and where they're best used in. I hope you find that beneficial and that you enjoyed that. I think it's quite interesting talking to Olivia and thinking of a garden as like a three-dimensional canvas. I hadn't really thought of it in that concept before, but it's a piece of artwork that you can live in, that you can enjoy, and all the um, insects and birds and everything can enjoy it along with you. And it's quite an interesting concept. And it's obviously evolving and changing over the season, so it's quite challenging getting it right for us gardeners but keeping it looking good throughout the seasons and then watching it um, progress as time goes by as everything grows and I think um, thinking back to when I was at school and in my art classes and I would do um, like an, a picture which uh, or a painting that looked quite kind of average and then the art teacher would come around and reach over your shoulder pick up your paintbrush do a few dabs here and there and transform it into something wonderful and I guess in that analogy mother nature is the art teacher who comes along and we plant some things it looks kind of okay but then mother nature comes along and adds the self seeders and um, puts in all these surprises that you hadn't you hadn't really thought of and makes it look wonderful and you get the credit for it so it's wonderful but um, anyway hope you enjoyed it and if you've got any questions or any comments just put them in the comment section or um, we have got an instagram page so you can direct me message us on that as well thank you very much for watching and join us again in the next video bye for now